Ladies and gentlemen, I am floating in space! Hello again, Internet. This is all in from what I'm listening to. Today is another day for experimental music. These are my favorite vlogs to do. I am so excited to be doing this one here. This is the third iteration and probably more to come later on. I have a bunch of experimental music to show off here. I am so excited to get through this. This is a pretty hefty list here. There are a lot of things that I've been collecting for this vlog in particular, so let's get started. The first thing I have here is a Barn Owl record. I was introduced to these guys through a What's In My Bag episode. I can't remember which one it was, but somebody got an album where it was Barn Owl and a orchestra. What it sounded like was this noisy, guitar-driven ambient music. So I went to Amoeba and perused through what kind of Barn Owl stuff they had and found this one. Honestly, the reason why I bought it is because the cover looked super interesting and desolate. Let's get a closer look at that here. Very cool band. I think it's only two guys, both who play guitar and just add layers and layers of effects to the music. I'm sure that I will be getting more of their stuff in the future, but until then, I'll be listening to this one. This one is Lost in the Glare. <laughs> The next album I have here is a Glenn Branca record. I've known about Glenn for a long time and I've owned his first debut album called The Ascension, which is probably considered one of his most famous works. This is his first release, so it's technically an EP here. He is a key person in the No Wave era, so in the 1970s in New York, there was a movement that was sort of like a revolution against the New Wave genre and people were experimenting with music and calling it no wave. So Glenn here gathered a bunch of guitarists and wrote a lot of pieces, a lot of which were very classical oriented pieces that were specifically for guitars. He's had pieces where there's four guitarists, he's had pieces where there's ten, I think he's even had a piece with like a hundred guitars, but he has gathered so many people together to make these recordings. This one actually features a song with Thurston Moore and Lee Ronaldo who both were in Sonic Youth. I don't know anything off this record, but I loved The Ascension a lot, and I found this one, I wanted to hear more of his work, and for $5 I decided to invest and check this one out. I'm super excited to hear what this one sounds like. <laughs> Next up here, I have a Brian Eno record. This is Apollo. Brian Eno is one of those guys that grew on me. I listened to some of his works and I wasn't really sure if I liked it. He's such an early innovator of ambient music, probably dating back to, I think, the late 60s, even the 70s. A lot of his pieces are just very simple. A piano that just drones for a while, some synthesizers here and there. But it's very primitive ambient music. You can see how he pioneered the genre because you hear a lot of ambient albums nowadays and it's like they totally took this from Brian Eno. This is a later release of his and the reason why I got it is because as the title suggests it's a space themed album and as you probably know I love space music and so I wanted to check this one out. I listened to it one time through and again I wasn't sure if I liked it enough. There were some cool things to it but it didn't catch me initially but the reason why I eventually grew to love this album is on an evening when I was riding my bike home it was a foggy night and I had this album playing through my headphones and there was something about the atmosphere that really added things to my bike ride home. So the next day I went to Amoeba and bought this record. Very good record. There's a lot of people involved with it too. I think his, yeah, Roger Eno, his brother, is involved with this record along with a couple other people. Great album if you're into space music and ambient music. Highly recommend checking this guy out.
Next album here comes straight from the dollar section. This is an album just simply called Songs. This album is as experimental as it's gonna get. It is literally eight songs of just lightning fast tape loops and record scratches alternated back and forth between two dudes here. This is an album that's kind of like the joke that I make to people when they ask me what kind of music I listen to. And I always say, well, I range from either rock, hip hop, R&B, and then I listen to weird shit, like tape scratches. Wasn't sure if I was gonna get this album initially, but after listening to it here and there online, I decided for a buck 99, I may as well. This is definitely an album that's not for everybody. It's just basically noise and scratches and weirdness. But for the sake of experimental music and appreciating experimental music, it's one to maybe venture to and experience for yourself. And if you find it in the dollar section of your local record store, you may as well just get it. It's an interesting listen. The next album I have here is a Roy Montgomery record. I've talked about this guy a lot in past vlogs, and it's getting to the point now where I'm just picking up albums that I don't have by him just to add to the collection. The main reason I got this record is because it had a recommended by an Amoeba employee sticker. In my head, anytime you see a sticker on an album, you really can't go wrong with the album. Especially when it comes to experimental music because you know that an employee has listened to both ends of the spectrum with experimental music. There's the really bad stuff and the really good stuff and they have found the good stuff and are trying to share that with the customers. This one is actually kind of different from his past stuff. This one he kind of adds some electronic flourishes to it, so it's still very much him with his layered guitars, but he adds these kind of electronic drums, and it's very different from what he does. It's still good, but just different. And even though it's different, I still love Roy. He makes fantastic music, and I'm excited to add this to the collection, and hopefully I can find his other albums so I can just complete his discography. <laughs> The next album I have here is a Badger Lore record. I talked about these guys in a vlog a while back. I don't even remember which vlog it was, but I had gotten their second album because it featured Grouper. This album is their first release, and it doesn't even have Grouper on it, but it still has some fantastic musicians on there. Tom Carter from The Carolyn Bynes, Rob Fisk from Seven Year Rabbit Cycle, Pete Swanson from Yellow Swans, and Ben Chasney from Six Organs of Admittance. They're all fantastic experimental musicians, and they've come together to make this record. This is like the only experimental supergroup that I know of, and all the people involved just do fantastic work. And on this record, they do just weird ambient experimental folk. They have banjos, they have cellos, they just have very odd compositions. I really enjoyed their second record, and I wanted to hear more of theirs, so uh, here we have this one. This is called Stories for Owls, and I'm excited to listen to it. I have here is an album called Strands. I've seen this album appear a lot on best of 2016 list and the reason why I bought it is because it's on the Cranky label which Cranky puts out fantastic stuff you really can't go wrong with their releases. And I was really happy with this album. It reminds me a little bit of One of Tricks Point Never. Just a little bit more electronic driven, more dancey. There's some 80s influence in it, and not like cheesy 80s music, but like more along the lines of kind of an 80s synthy soundtrack with some more ambient vibes to it. And the cover alone is super cool, so very good release, and I'm happy I got this one. <laughs> Next album here is an album by a dude named Jandek. This guy has the 
biggest, well, one of the biggest discographies I've ever seen. And he's been around forever. He, I think he even started releasing albums in the late 70s and has been putting things out up until today. But I picked this record in particular because of the cover. There's something about it where it looks like he's recording music in a dungeon and it sounds like he's recording music in a dungeon. His music is considered outsider music, which the only other person I know who does that style is Daniel Johnston. But Daniel has more composed music. This guy just kind of takes a guitar and just bashes it, bangs on drums, just makes as much noise as he possibly can. But he also has some elements of blues music, which is very unique, especially for experimental music. He's a very interesting guy, not much is known about him. People have speculated who he is, but the only evidence we have are all his records. So I'm happy to actually own one of his many albums. This one's called Follow Your Footsteps. It's a very interesting introduction. Maybe I'll buy more of his stuff if I can find it, but until then, I will be enjoying this one here. The next album I have here is a Johan Johansson record. Johan is an Icelandic classical composer and he does a lot of neoclassical ambient compositions, particularly soundtracks, like I've done with a lot of these other albums. I bought it because of the cover. It just has kind of a spooky looking abandoned town. And actually, I believe this is for a movie. I'm not entirely sure which movie it is. For the film Varmints by Mark Crest, which is interesting because I thought that this was just a standalone album. He does do a lot of compositions for soundtracks, but he does have a couple albums that are not for movies. But even if you haven't seen the movie, this album is really cool, very, very beautiful. It's called And In The Endless Pause There Came The Sound Of Bees. I listened to this album from start to finish on a late night drive back to my hometown, and it was a very indulging and atmospheric album to have on. So I'm a fan, I love this album, and probably might get more of his stuff. I think he's actually going to be doing the soundtrack for the new Blade Runner movie, which should be really cool. So I'll definitely check that out and be listening to this one again and again. The next album I have here is a double. This is a Secret Pyramids record. Again, bought this because of the cover, though I had no idea what was on this album. On one side we have a cloudy mountain terrain, and on the other side we have space, two things I enjoy. And I know that I had made a good buy when I opened this up and found this little sticker on here, and it says, recalls the mighty early work of Popol Vuh, Stars of the Lid, and Flying Saucer Attack. And if you know me, you know that Flying Saucer Attack is one of my all-time favorite bands. And then when I actually listened to the album, I was very, very impressed by the work. Much like that Brian Eno record, I listened to this while riding my bike home on a foggy evening, and this just was a perfect match for that atmosphere. From start to finish, both discs are tremendous, very beautiful, atmospheric songs, and I'm so happy I invested in this one. It's very good and worth checking out. I got here comes in the form of a DVD. This is a documentary called Noisy People. I stumbled across this when browsing the experimental section and it's not every day that you find DVDs in that area. It's a documentary that follows a bunch of Bay Area experimental musicians. It shows their lifestyles, 
what they do, why they make the music they make, and why they're interested in it. And I think that's such a great topic, because you hear an experimental album and you wonder, God, why would somebody make this, let alone why would anybody listen to this? But there are people like me who are very interested and passionate for that music, and there are people who are passionate about playing that kind of music, so it's a great insight as to why they play this music and why they do what they do. There's somebody who makes music by running a bow onto pieces of wood and leaves and plants and creates ambient compositions from that. And that's just one of many. This is a cool film to check out. If you ever stumble across this, I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you are interested in experimental music. I hated the music I was playing. Just Paul McCartney. I can't explain. I'd like to say I'm an artist, but quite frankly, I do weird music. <laughs> and the final thing I have here, it would not be an experimental vlog if I don't include a Flying Saucer Attack album. I was actually surprised to find this at Amoeba. This is an EP, and it's a collaboration between Flying Saucer Attack and Roy Montgomery. It's only three songs, but all three of the songs on here are fantastic. All the songs on here are taken from various recordings, live recordings, studio recordings, and mixed together and makes these very interesting noise droning compositions. And it has one of my favorite Flying Saucer Attack songs called The Whole Day Song. This is actually, it's an instrumental of it. And that was actually my first exposure to the song was through this album. And then eventually when I heard New Lands, I heard the finished product of it. Initially, I was thinking I was going to have to buy this on Discogs, but one day Amoeba just so happened to have a copy of it on sale, so it was a no-brainer that I had to buy it. And the best part about this record is the record is red. So I'm so excited to add this to my Flying Saucer Attack collection, particularly the vinyl collection. I am one step closer to owning everything by these guys, and I will be spinning this a lot. <laughs> Okay, internet, that does it for me. Uh, is, space is pretty hot right now, so I'm gonna go back down to Earth and open a window and try to cool down. If you have any bands, albums, or whatever you want to suggest to me, leave a comment down below and I'll check them out. If I like them, maybe I'll include them in a vlog. But until then, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye.